On this week's episode, it's a special bonus episode. For those of you that don't know, last week we published episode 100 of season 2, which means you stuck with us for more than 200 episodes and we couldn't be more grateful. So enjoy this bonus episode with highlights from previous conversations from our amazing guests in season 2 and also best bits from some of our episodes of My Home in Portugal and Portugal Property Talks. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel to watch some of this episode. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And for the full bonus episode, go to Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now, over to this week's bonus episode. Portuguese people are the nicest people of Europe, in my opinion. They are the nicest, gentlest people in Europe. And not because of a hidden agenda. It's just part of their DNA. Whether you travel from north to south, from west to east, I mean, whatever. If there's something, they're always there with uh, trying to help you with a smile, with, with, with a kind of, uh, yeah, always trying to support you, to be of help, and, and, and uh, yeah, always with a smile. And, and that you don't find that in other countries anymore. I mean, I'm going to tell you something that happened the first couple of weeks I was here. It was raining. It was it was dark. And my car, the, 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 the light was flashing. And I had to, I was parking under a bridge. And then kind of immediately, two, three minutes later, a car parked in front of me. My first thought was, oh, my God, I don't have a weapon. That was my first thought. Because I thought, here I am in the dark, nobody around me. Immediately, a car is stopping. And actually, the only thing the guy was doing was, can I help you? Which, Checking if you're okay. Yeah. yeah. Just assuring if I was okay, if you could be of support or helping. This is something which in most countries you don't find anymore. I have been blown away by uh, the kindness, muito simpatico, that how beautiful the, the hearts are of the people here and my neighbors. Um, I'll give you an example. I was here for two hours and needed to find a, a store, a grocery store. And so I started walking, but I got lost. I turned around and I saw a gentleman uh, outside his home. And he, he had kind of a stern look on his face. Yes. And... So I, you know, I said, Botard, uh, fala English. And just not a super friendly look. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah. And he just, no. And so it's like, on, on day. And I'm trying to remember, on day. Go mercado, mini mercado. Uh, a key, I mean, you're just this broken, crazy, you know, probably sound like a caveman talking. And he just got up and, and walked away. And I thought, oh my God, this is my worst nightmare. Dylan, he got, he walked next door, got the lady next door who spoke English, brought her back to me, and she explained where to go. And she said, you can, in, in English, she said, you'll have all the essentials. At this little mini market, it's not big, but you can get your essentials, bread, milk. And I said, e vino, like, and wine, like that's my essential right now. And then the guy who wasn't really smiling, just cracked up. He thought that was funny. And so then I'm like, oh, I have now I've made like my two first friends. And so I, I found my way there and I carry my bags back which I overestimated my strength at walking back up there. <laughs> and, but there they are. And I put the, and they waved to me and like, it's like in the first two hours. Coming to Portugal was part of my rewiring, my um, reimagining of, of midlife. And now that I'm here, I, I'll have to tell you, Dylan, that I still pinch myself to remind myself, but you're not on vacation. You live here. This is your home. And it, it has, it gives you like a reset. Uh, well, first it's coming from America. It was like a detox. And then it's a reset. 
um, of the of pace and frame of mind. I mean, just the beauty of the, the castles and just like everything in there, like Fatima and stuff like that. Fatima, like there was yeah, like yeah. the um, you know, the, the the way that people would go on their knees and to the church and just so much history of just everything. I think that was just intriguing to me because it just everything was beautiful. Like for a photographer or a cameraman, you just it's a perfect place. You just I mean, you can't even bring in a film or put it, you know, it's just, it's just, it's everything is beautiful. And um, I mean, the, f- the food, the gosh, like, everything about Portugal is good. That's why I was saying, you know, God, I'd love to have a place out there. It's, you know, it's different. And and the people, the people are just amazing. Like here you go to LA, all this, you ask people to help you this, they just walk by, ignore you. Don't, people in Portugal, they'll go, they go out of the way to help you and, and they're honestly good people. It's not like, you know, there's, they're not like all these fake people. And I just fell in love with Portugal way back when. And um, I think if everyone could act like the Portuguese people do and, and share the love of life with each other, then we could have a, the world could be a better place. Cause right now it seems like turmoil and all these guys are fighting and we're just worried about wars. And you go to Portugal and you kind of forget about that. And the people are so lovely. And I wish the whole world could be like that somehow it feels that we Portuguese have also this desire of traveling around the world and discovering other other lands. So it's um, the fact that we are right at the corner and then it's just sea and, you know, the history of people traveling and going out on the sea. I, I feel that I have that. So I've been traveling all my life. I lived in London for seven years, mm. in Los Angeles, in Madrid, in uh, Tenerife. I've been living around but somehow always coming back to Portugal and, and always selling my country as very proud as all the Portuguese are, I'm sure you know, because you've been living here for a while. But the fact that we are not, we don't brag so much like other cultures do, like the Latins, you know, they love the Italians or the French, they love bragging about. We are not like that, but deep down, down, we are the proudest, you know, <laughs> we're like, hey, Portuguese is the best. Portugal is this uh, layers and layers and layers and layers of several cultures of seven invasions, as many people like to call it. And and they are in a sort, but from prehistory until today, we're just a mix of several cultures that keep getting here and coming and coming and coming uh, and mixing what with uh, who's here. Um, so Portugal today is a result of that many thousands of years of uh, human evolution uh, and, uh, and, and, and culture on top of culture, on top of culture, on top of culture. And then... And one of the most amazing things about Portugal, uh, it's the contrasts you have in the same country. So if you're flying down south, if you're flying Algarve, it's a, re- a really different place than from Alentejo. And then it's a really different place from the north of Portugal, you know. So you you get this feeling that you have several countries compacted in just one, in just Portugal. You know, you have you have the mountains up north. Then you have uh, Alentejo. It's quite plain. Um, Algarve. You mean flat? Flat. Sorry, in the yeah, Algarve, yeah. beaches are beautiful. Then if you fly in the Azores and in, in Madeira, it's mm. a completely different set as well. Um, and that's what actually attracts me the most, you know. It, it's it's in the same country, you do have really different places when you can where you can have different experiences. You realize that in such a tiny country, the level of diversity that you have Amazing. available, I mean, how can you get bored in Portugal? It's impossible unless you want but look in a few hours you go from mountain to ocean to lakes to rivers to plains to valleys i mean vineyards um, you name it and the other thing is that as you move uh, along all this diversity it changes the language it changes the gastronomy and it changes the weather so um you know for me literally portugal is a small disneyland for grown-ups Portuguese people are so nice, so um, open and welcoming. So once you meet a couple, then you meet their friends and and you you get to learn about a lot of new things about their culture and their city. And then for me, like the cafe culture, I love. I love that type of um, just hanging out with friends, um, doing those types of things, which is kind of laid back and relaxed. So it's just a really nice 
type of living that where we are right now with the the stage of life, we maybe don't want to move around as much as we had, especially now having a four-year-old thinking about schools and and just not moving around too much. Um, So I think that's why we'll be here a bit more longer term than other places at the stage of life we're in. They love having kids. Um, You see kids all over the place. And I think that in in restaurants, and they're well-behaved because of it because they've just grown up always doing that. Yes. So you have them there and all the time I'll see Sia smiling or waving at someone. I look around and there's a little Portuguese lady who's just, you know, making faces and stuff. Um, or something for me that I thought I loved, like when Valencia was even younger and I would just walk around like when she was two in the stroller, we'd walk by maybe like an 18, 19 year old boy and he'd wave at her. He's so used to having kids around, whether it's from his family or his extended family that, that he's comfortable with that. Whereas in the States, I think you get a lot of boys in a certain like age range where they're just like, Oh, kids, I don't know what to do with kids. And they're awkward and everything, but it's not like that here because they're so family oriented and they do things as families that kids are just part of a daily life. One thing that always stuck out when I was a child, I remember we'd come here on holiday and we were going out Cordirita, which is the tea room street Yep. and we, we stopped at a stall and we'd come from Scotland or, or wherever we were and we'd stopped at a stall with one of these little vendors and she was eating lunch but she was eating soup and bread and she says Stansurvij, would you like some and I was really taken aback as a child I was like what do you mean you're eating s-? but that is so Portuguese everyone always nods you know do you want to share my meal or I don't know I, I love it here the the weather the food the the climate the uh I don't know, the sand on the beach, everything. The beaches are beautiful. And bringing up children, I always thought I would travel, but I've really stuck here since I've been a mum. There is no other place I would want to bring up my children, uh, just ever. My, I mean, they both, they're, they're safe. They, One practically lives at the stables in the Quinta de Marinho because he rides there and he's safe and happy. And, you know, the other one's a photographer. The older one, he's, he's almost 23, he's a photographer. It's an amazing wow. place for them. It's safe. It's an amazing place to bring up children. We've got really good schools, beautiful parks. It's it's just, there is no other place I would bring up my boys. And we just find the Portuguese um, people so lovely. Like, And we'll take off in Portuguese. And then we generally start smiling because we, you know, we all, we're always saying, you follow muito mal Portuguese, um pouco Portuguese. I've already heading up that we speak bad and only a little bit. And everybody speaks English. Yeah. So they, they, we find that they do help us. And if we say to them, look, we only want to speak in Portuguese. Can we just speak in Portuguese? They'll sort of smile and do that. But the conversation's over very quickly. <laughs> we, we don't have a, a, an extensive vocabulary. But that's another in that you guys have got um, in terms of engaging and integrating is is children. Uh, because there yeah. is there is this um, care and this love and everything is about the kids in this country. And uh, that you must see that as an, another, another way where you, you, you all of, all of, all of a sudden, just because you've got two kids are automatically part of the community because of, of them have, I mean, with yeah. the parties and everything like that as well. We are absolutely in the right place in the right country for, um, for our little boys and the school, we have regular meetings with the school. They, uh, that's the, the teacher and another lady called Mary Joao that offers support for Noah. And we, we go for these meetings and it's 90 minutes. You know, this is not a quick 15 minute catch up with the teacher. It's 90 minutes that we sit with these beautiful ladies that just adore children, that love them, that they know what they need. Probably New York is one of the most high paced lifestyles in the, in the world. Um, <laughs> No doubt, and I was working. Yeah. You know, I was working uh, twelve, sixteen-hour days. Yeah, yeah, really long time. Uh, so, so what was it about the lifestyle here that gave you that balance? Um, what was it about the the way people live, the way that things are done here that that gave you that 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 balance that you were looking for? Well, one, I, I learned to be more patient. You can't expect uh, things to be done immediately, uh, even though sometimes it irritates me. But I think you have to embrace the Portuguese pace of life. Because culturally, people don't like to say no to you. So you yeah. have to learn that often they're not going to do what they told you they're going to do. But they don't want to tell you that. So sometimes, you know, you go to many meetings uh, as head of a jail department. I dealt with lots of things. And uh, and I, I, I always say, I mean, it's okay to tell me right now you can't do it. 
I'll find plan B. I mean, that's what life's about. So uh, there is, you know, it's a, it's, there's, there, it's, it's a two-edged sword. Uh, it's really great that you don't have to confront things. Uh, and there is a Portuguese way of just like letting it slide. And then, and, and what I've learned, this is the most beautiful thing about Portugal. It all works out. <laughs> so you you don't I've you know it's easy to you know I gotta have it now I gotta have it now and after time you realize you know it's better not to burn bridges it's better to keep some things uh, close 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 to yourself so but there's a love of life here that's different than in the states uh, and or New York I mean everybody's in a rush in, in New York so I think those are the things that uh, were were different but in but. Uh, compelling to me sometimes you end up in places unexpectedly and you find like you you find this feeling i you can't really pinpoint it you know maybe you have experienced it yourself you're going to a place and you think hmm, i don't really feel it you know i mean it's not it's not horrible but i also don't want to stay here and i feel portugal was more like oh okay it's so beautiful i didn't expect it i feel really home here in a way you know it's this feeling that you can't really point a finger to you know And I had that in Portugal. And then with Lisbon, even at the beginning, when I moved here, I was already making plans to leave. You know, I was like, okay, now I'm January in the springtime, I can cycle off, you know. And in this short time, even, everything changed for me. And like, I got to know the city and the people and I made some friends and I was like, I can't leave because it doesn't feel right. So I'm just here because it feels right. What were, what were some of the things that surprised you? coming to Portugal after you, you know, you come with some expectations, you have a certain idea of what it's going to be like. What yeah. surprised you about, about this place? It's a, it's a funny thing because there's certain bullet points when you look at the characteristics of a, of a city or a place that are going to be uh, rational and some that are going to be emotional. And the, even though I'd heard the people were incredibly kind, if, when I got there, if kindness is something you feel, it's not something you read. So even though I read it, when I met them in, in person, I was like, wow, these people are so incredibly over the top kind. Like my mom is a fiercely independent woman and she knows that you know, I spent a lot of time on the road and my job is pretty intense. So she hid the fact that she had a minor surgery on her foot. And um, I kept calling her going, hey, why didn't you answer? There's a four hour block where she wasn't answering the phone. And I was like, hey, this is weird. So she finally answered and said, look, I'm admitting I lied. I had minor surgery, just outpatient stuff. And I go, who's that in the background? And it was all her neighbors were in her house, making her food, doing her laundry, like really going out of their way to take care of her because she wasn't supposed to be walking on her feet for three days. So I, I was so humbled by that. And, and that building now feels, it really feels like a big family, which, you know, after you move across an entire uh, ocean is a really wonderful feeling. Obviously, you know, it's good that you like got this close relationship with your mom. Because that's very Portuguese. Like, yeah. so it's not out of sorts, you know? Sure. Like when I moved to Portugal and 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 I met people, they were, and, and my, I mean, my mom was here in Portugal when I moved. Oh, wow. And um, when I moved, I didn't live with her. And people were like, why aren't you living with your mother? Like, what's yeah. what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, what were some of those things for you? I mean, because you, you've, you've looked online, you've made contact with realtors and stuff. Um, you then coming here and you're looking with like really seriously looking at, is this an option for, for me and my mom? Yeah. What were those things that kind of made you decide, yeah, this is, this is the right place. Cause it wasn't about the properties really. It comes down yeah. to the place. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it was, it was a little bit of a gamble to be honest, because we sure. came right after the pandemic happened. So I'd known a few friends. I had a few friends who were Portuguese um, and I really liked them as people um, Anna had friends from Brazil who were living in Portugal, so she knew them as well. And they were good enough friends that we knew they were like, you know, there's certain friends that you meet that you go, okay, these are friends. I'm going to see them once in a while. And then there's other friends that are like tent poles. They're, they're foundational friends where, you know, you're going to build bigger and bigger friendships, um, with them. And those are the kind of friends that we made when we first got here. It was people that were quick to say, I'm going to introduce you to other people. And, and they knew they, they could empathize with what it was like to be starting life over again. And they made efforts to, to help us feel at home, not just to feel like they were a friend, but to help us feel at home. And that was a, it, it's a big difference. 
five years ago, my partner and I, we were, you know, we wanted to start this tech hub as it you know, was talking about earlier in the podcast. And we had to find a, a you know, a property to do that in. A, mm-hmm. And we were looking high and low and everywhere. And just, you know, I was, we couldn't find anything. And I was very upset. I was like, we're never going to find anything. And and we're driving back one evening, this Saturday evening from a restaurant. And I was all, just just go back to the hotel. I'm just, oh, I'm so fed up. Can't find anything. And we drive by this motorcycle club, the Panish Motorcycle uh, Club. And and my partner, Ian Eric, says, let's go in. And I'm like, I don't think so. I'm from Tennessee and Nashville. And you don't go into a motorcycle club at midnight on a Saturday <laughs> night. Let's just go to the hotel. Come on. He's like, no, no, no. Let's go in. I said, no, 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 no. And he's like, come on, get out of your, you know, comfort zone. He's thinking just, you know, we'll knock on the door and ask if we can come in. If they say come in. Yeah. And if not, we'll, we'll leave. So we did that. We, I mean, we really did. I opened the door and I still remember standing there and he's, you know, saying, Hey, are we welcome? Can we come in? And, you know, people were looking at us very strangely. For, it was all of a sudden went very quiet in there in the club. Uh, and then finally said, yeah, come on in. Well, we stayed there for four hours, I think. So it was, uh, and it was the beginning of this project. For me, the first thing about arriving in Portugal was just this spectacular landscape, this paradise, you know, the lagoon, flat water you can do your kite surf and then a couple of sand dunes over you've got the ocean you've got the waves so you can do for us you know in our lifestyle we've got everything we need I mean you know most of Portugal is surrounded by the ocean you've got miles and miles of Atlantic coast of beach you know and Portugal is still quite um it's still developing you know it's not packed it's got quite a relatively small population in ratio to land mass it's mm-hmm. like 10 million mm-hmm. is it mm-hmm. for the whole country yeah. yeah just under 11 i think so you've got the big hubs like in the north like porto and then you've got around the lisbon area where i guess is it correct me if i'm wrong it's the most densely yeah. populated yeah it is and then the rest of that it's countryside or it's coast so there's not it's not overdeveloped yet so you will still find a lot of wild places and a lot of wild coastline which is very beautiful. What were what were some of the moments? Uh, what were some of the things that you experienced wow. in those visits to Portugal that made you decide, hey, I want to to spend more time uh, and and make this almost a, a a home away from home. First of all, I I just felt it in my heart, uh, and I've never before I've never had such a uh, I've never experienced such a strong you know feeling in my heart that this is it. But uh, I think um, um, uh, there were two reasons. One, uh, the first one is that I am a nature nature lover. And um, in Portugal, I can experience the the very close connection with the nature, with the ocean, and feel the power and the energy coming from the ocean. So uh, it gives me such a strong, you know, wow, it's, it's amazing for me. And the second thing, uh, the people, because uh, from the beginning, um, I don't know, I think Polish people and Portuguese people, we communicate very, very well with with each other. And uh, I felt the, you know, the, the, the chemistry and uh, I met so many um, inspiring people, but also people were, were so helpful uh, for me. Uh, if they knew that I was working on the article or on the book later on the book, they were helping me uh, from the beginning. They they made everything to make me feel like home. I just wanted to tell you that I'm a complete Portugal fanatic. And I don't know if you are prepared for that, um, for that Sounds level good. of intensity. You know, I think that uh, Portugal is like my geographic soulmate. And I, um, although it may sound weird, I love it much the way we love a human being, you know, very profoundly. And I feel so you know, I love here for two years already, and it's just not getting better at all for me. <laughs> I'm going deeper and deeper into Portugal, which is which is a wonderful feeling. So as I was landing in Lisbon, I saw the red bridge of Lisbon from the air, you know, against this backdrop of like perfect blue sky, which you get in Portugal every day, practically. And, you know, the green Tejo River, so Tagus River below me, and, and that, you know, city ahead of me. And it's just in that moment, I was already, you know, extremely excited about it and pretty much in love then I arrived I remember the first impressions where you know the air was extremely pleasant and it was clean and I remember we had an outside position in that airplane so I 
you know, um, came out and breathed the air, which was warm. And it, there was this light wind, which we typically get a little light wind from the Atlantic here. So it never gets too hot. It's always just very pleasant. And um, and then I got into an Uber and there, there, there was a decisive moment for me because I was driving through Lisbon. For me, it was something, you know, incredible because they were, jacarandas were in full bloom and together with Lisbon and the light there, and the, you know, those white um, tiles on, on, on all the pavements, the calzadas, which are white, often with like intricate designs and patterns together, all that created this impression on me, which was extraordinary. And, you know, those trees were in full bloom. It was all like a movie set. I remember I was driving in that Uber, just sort of sobbing there in the back, in the back because I was so taken by that fall, by, by the beauty of this place. And many people actually say that when they come to Portugal, you know, they get this special vibe, even like, very serious business people and you know finance people and, and the like they are they feel like a balm on their soul or something along these lines some, something a bit esoteric one thing is the house and the house yeah. needs to be nice yeah but you want to be in a place that makes you happy you want to be in a yeah. place that feels good yeah. what were some of those things that you felt uh, and saw while you had it confirmed it just felt good yeah i, I can't explain it, it, it it's Again, I, I say it again, there is something in the air, but I don't know what it is. I think it's, it's the, the easiness, it's the, the easy life. It's not fancy, it's not... What I like the most is when you go, when you, when you go out, you can go out as you want. I can I can wear shorts and a t-shirt and go on my flip-flops. It's no problem. In Belgium, I can't do that. That's that's maybe one thing. I don't know, but it it's it just feels good. We were sitting in in, in Foch having lunch, a simple lunch, mm. but it was okay. It was on on, on a plastic chair, on a plastic table. When I do it in Belgium, I go, because I, I hate it. And here I don't have a problem with it. So it's, it's completely different. And I think that's the thing, what we like. And actually when we come, it's always the same. You forget, you forget what we do in Belgium and we have another life. Yeah, I mean, what do you think are the things that are worth it? I mean, there's certain things that you can't put a price tag on them. Um, no. That we that we seem to have here in Portugal and still have. Um, what do you think it is that people are are coming here for? Vegetables. <laughs> you have no idea. I've been around. I've traveled a lot, lots of countries, a lot of different things. Our vegetables are like rock stars. They're amazing. The way that we eat them, you know, our salads, our our sautés are just like, we have everything here to be healthy. You know, those... <laughs> I'm, twice working... the man, I'm twice the man I was when I, when I came. <laughs> <laughs> the most amazing thing is Portuguese lunches. You know, you work like three hours in the morning and it's one o'clock and everybody's like, I'm starving, let's eat. And at one ten, you're at a restaurant and then you have the soup then you have the plate and then you have the wine and then you have the dessert. And in the end, you still have a whiskey. So at end. three, <laughs> so at 4 p.m., you finish your lunch and you say, I have to go to work. And when you're a local, you start learning where the best places are. I know we, we go to a beautiful lunch. We have a four course meal plus a bottle of wine or, or, or a beer. And that won't set us back more than nine euros at lunch. Nine euros for four course meal, and it's not like a normal four course meal. It's, it's properly served: a steak, a fish, rabalo, a sea bass. Starts with the starts with the with the with the olives, then the bread, then the then the soup, then the main course, then the dessert, plus a bottle of wine or beer. So that costs we get as low as six euros fifty. So obviously, there's very fancy restaurants here. There are fancy restaurants here, and the wine is inexpensive, like you can't believe. I mean. The other day, and we actually tested all these rosés, you know, French rosé, and we found a one that is so inexpensive. Uh, it was one ninety-eight euros per bottle. So we bought a few cases, and it's one of the best rosés I've tasted, even the ten and twenty euro bottle. So there are mm -hmm. so many hidden gems in, in Portugal. 
all your medical, your 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 medical is free. So I got a thing called EPO, which is Institute of Portuguese of Oncology, and spent a lot of time there, obviously, with my cancer because there's no cure. So I'm always on permanent treatment, and and it's it's really is good. And uh, our medical system here in Portugal is superb. How has that experience been for you? Besides, you know what you just mentioned. Yeah, well, I understand the first incident I had where I had an atrial fibrillation. So I went to a semi-private hospital. Now, this, and I know this from uh, I have a lot of doctor friends. And I, with a, they had to restart my heart. I was in ICU for the mm-hmm. night, did all that stuff. And the whole bill came to 500 euros, 500 euros. The equivalent would have cost 400,000 rand in South Africa, which is 20,000 euros. So that's that's the difference. Throughout the uh, now almost 50 years of 48 years that we've been living in democracy, uh, we have repeatedly committed to uh, what can still be called the welfare state. Portugal has been run by social democrats, be center left or center right, for most of the past 48 years. And there is a central commitment to the existence of the welfare state. Now, what 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 does that comprise? We take for granted that it is a universal right of every person living in Portugal, not only the Portuguese, you know, uh, foreigners living here, uh, foreigners coming to Portugal and choosing to live in Portugal, or uh, citizens of the European Union, if they come here, they will have access to the very same services that are now being provided for little sum, a little sum or very little to the Portuguese people. So we committed to have a certain number of services that should be there and should be provided by the state. What are those services? Very easily, it's free universal health care. Okay. So in Portugal, no matter how serious your illness, the state will take care of you. And even if it say it's an extremely expensive let's say, uh, uh, cancer uh, 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 that you've got, you know, the state will take care of you and will take care of you to the very last day. And by the way, I've witnessed this happening with people in my family, you know, uh, a lot of people live to very old ages these days. And, and you know, as the older you get, the higher the probability that you will get cancer. I have seen people in my family die of cancer and being taken care of by the state and paying exactly nil for that. You know, um, uh, my wife has got a chronic, uh, a chronic disease that she cannot get rid of, uh, you know, get rid of, and the state simply takes care of it. You know, all of her medicine is paid by the state. Okay, so that's one set of things. You know, universal free healthcare. Yeah, that's I can I can attest to that as well. I I, I was sick, very very sick in 2019. I spent five months in Santa Maria. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With very very expensive treatment, dialysis on a dialysis machine machine every single day for five months, and I didn't pay a cent. And I wasn't even a citizen at that stage. I was a resident. I was just you a resident, resident. Yeah. and you phenomenal, see. just amazing. Yeah. So there you go. Now, I, I, I should tell you, in order for you know, foreigners listening to you, when you go to a Portuguese hospital, it doesn't look like a five-star hotel, as most hospitals look uh, look like in, say, the United States. But it'll be provided, it'll be free and democratic in the sense that your money, whether you have it or not, will not make the treatment that is being provided to you different from the guy on the bed next to you. Okay, so it's it's also equalitarian in the sense that every single human being is treated the same. Everything you get for the price that you pay in Portugal is just unreal, at least in my humble opinion. You know, like we were getting a, a detached house, all new, all speak and span, like with a garden, with a pool, everything new for just that amount that we paid. And I thought it was incredible. Not not to, to like be too flattering to you guys, but, it, but I thought in that region with the mix of everything I mentioned before, like close to the beach and everything, I thought that wasn't real. I, I think for that amount, I could get a very old apartment here in Antwerp, you know, like on the sixth or seventh floor with not even a nice view. So just the fact that it was within my reach, you know, like in that area, located where it was, which was really important for me. Uh, there was one day that I was surfing, and uh, and the day was was a great day. So friends, uh, sun, um, beers in the beach. Uh, we were going for dinner, and at some point I was surfing. I was like, man, I wish I would have more days like this. And then 
suddenly like an eureka moment i was like yeah but probably you can you are just looking in the wrong place i said no more it's like life is too short to winter in berlin and i came to portugal and lived here from january to april so for four months to escape the winter okay and I loved it so much that I then just started making a bunch of changes in Berlin that would allow me to move here permanently. And so I moved here permanently in January of this year. So just about a year. I mean, have your expectations been met? Absolutely. I am so much happier here than I, than I was in Berlin um, okay. for a variety of reasons. But I think the weather is a huge factor, you know, being able to go outside, spend time in nature, not be kind of confined to the indoors for literally half the year um, is really very good for your mental health. I mean, realistically, Miguel, you could you could live anywhere in the world with your work and, and your skill set. I mean, what is it that keeps you here? What do you, as a local, what are the things that you kind of hold on to and appreciate about living here? Well, I, I in 2011, I did go to LA uh, for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. I, spent, I spent on and off about two years in Los Angeles. I don't know. It's just every time I'd come back to Portugal, I just, this is home, you know? Um, and um, yeah, we, you know, we thought about that, you know, where would we want to go? What would we do? Um, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, that thing home is where the heart is. I'm 50 years old, man. I want my kids to grow up here. I'm not going anywhere, man. I love this place. We moved in mid-June and there's a festival that takes place in mid-June for an entire week. So we really felt like there was this celebration party for us when we arrived. Maybe. And there were concerts every night. We're like, oh, this it's is a like sardine, It's a sardine time. Yeah. yeah it's a sa sa San Antonio. Yeah, it's exactly. the time of San Antonio. Yeah. And we, we, j we joked, is this going to last all summer? Is this the whole, <laughs> yeah. Is this the summer? <laughs> so great. So there was, there was a certain aspect of, you know, enchantment just because it felt so different and almost like a vacation, if you will. And we eventually had to calm down and say, okay, mm -hmm. we're not on vacation anymore. So just, you know, yeah. eat well and stop drinking. So, you know, <laughs> so, so much So much fun. good wine. Yeah. So much good wine. But, 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 um, I, I would say the kind of roots, immediate roots that started growing. And I don't want to speak for Rick, but for me it was just instant decompression. Mm -hmm. It's just a different pace. And people aren't interested in that pace. It's not even a part of their daily mm -hmm. ethos <laughs> to move fast and to to favor speed over connection. And it was just so easy to fall into that rhythm mm -hmm. and um, begin to savor things a little bit differently. What are people looking for? What are they What are they trying to find? Uh, to escape the stressfulness society of the Netherlands. That's maybe the main thing. Our country is too full. There's too many cars. Uh, there's a too stressful life. Uh, we're a small country, lots of people. Um, like in every country these days, we're facing lots of trouble with energy transition, with, uh, with, with nature, with all kinds of things, and people want to escape that. Uh, one of our one of our TV sponsors said that even uh, lots of clients from the United States are calling him because the world is changing and Portugal feels like a safe, nice, quiet uh, country to proceed with the re in the rest of the of the years that you have ahead of you or yourself. And for someone like me who's coming from a small town in Canada, you know the security factor and being able to have like the same kind of um, environment as I, I was brought up in, you know, uh, is, is actually great because I think that's nowadays like a really rare thing uh, in many, many countries, uh, in many, many cities. Uh, it, it's it's not necessarily possible to be, uh, you know, doing things uh, without always having in the back of your mind, you know, all of the security issues that you need to be aware of. And and so again, going back to the kiosk and, and the playground and the park, you know, it, it's kind of really nice to be able to let my son play and being able to kind of sometimes uh, take a few steps back and kind of uh, not be worried about, you know, mm. all kinds of things that happen to him, except maybe falling from, uh, <laughs> from, 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 with whatever he's climbing on yeah. in the playground 
yes exactly exactly but uh, yeah that's really nice to be able to to live like that and then not having you know too much uh, security around uh, why does this why does portugal feel like home uh, for you guys portugal i think still has that good balance people here and you can say that people here um uh, work to live and not you know, live to work in a sense because mm -hmm. that's what a lot of people in the, like the states you know where I come from in California I mean all your whole your whole life is dominated by work and mm -hmm. basically um, how far you can go in the sense of making money and you know what big house or the car you can buy yeah. and that becomes dominant it dominates your life and I think we were trying to get away from that and I think um, what you go to you know provide the good balance and, and still has a lot of the world, world charm and then we, that's why we love it. I just feel at home here. It's hard to explain that. I just mm -hmm. feel at home. I feel like I belong and I just feel happy here. In comparison to my life in London back then, it was, it was, it was such a hectic, busy life that I, I failed to see what, what's, what's, you know, everything around me. And therefore here it's 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 slightly different it's able to to slow down a little bit and actually appreciate and get out more and travel and take on road trips explore portugal as much as possible those things have sort of changed me in in such in in, in such profoundly basically as a person to be able to appreciate you know there's the simple activities and simple things you know and you know, life is already very complicated, so be able to actually enjoy the moment, just being here, enjoying the life here, enjoying the simple pleasures, it's, it's well worth enough. So it was raining so heavily that I had a flooding um, in my apartment. It okay. was, so I just moved in, uh, it was less than a week, but the day after when I was walking around, um, everyone was helping each other. So the whole community was helping each other um with the floodings and the houses and just really like being there for one another i was hearing the conversations in a coffee place of like oh and there's this foreign girl that just moved and yeah she even had to like go to the hotel because her place got flooded but we don't know who she is and oh. and then i turned around and everyone's like oh but you're who are you you're new in town and i know they're like oh you're the one so um it was just this beautiful moment of realizing that people are really there for one another to mm -hmm. provide a helping hand uh, when things also get rough. The whole notion of being part of a community is, is so crucial. So for me, uh, moving around the world, I'm in the face of life that now I want to be at a place where I can call home, where I can also have these deeper connections. Uh, we were always eager to ex explore different uh, cultures and go different places. So we started researching and Portugal showed up on our uh, radar through some influencers and all of this. And we started doing a whole bunch of research and we made a decision, sight unseen, that we were moving here. Wow. And fortunately, when we got here, we were pleasantly surprised that it was even better than we thought. So safety... Uh, quality of healthcare and knowing that you're not going to get be bankrupt if you ever have some major illness. Um, uh, the fact that it's you know the weather is is nice. Uh, people, of course, uh, should be at the top of the list. Extremely welcoming here. It's so easy to get to uh, the rest of Europe and Africa and Middle East and. You know, I go to the States, it takes me seven hours to go there. So it's centrally located where I can really go anywhere I want um, without, you know, having to, to fly 24, 30 hours or whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel like we're not constantly uh, being sold to or we, there's not always uh, some conflict that we're dealing with. So it's, it's a peaceful life. For me, a very good example is that when we moved here, by ourselves, we, we have no family in Portugal. It was the two of us, that was it, yeah, and the cats. When we moved here, the next week, all the neighbors passed by with a bottle of wine. Wow. In Berlin, we've been living in the same place for five years. We didn't know our neighbors. When you move in a different country where you don't have friends, you have nobody, the fact that you can at least rely on the people living around you you don't feel like you're bothering them. Uh, you feel like they're open for coffee, for talking, and it doesn't matter which age. That makes it so much easier. Yeah. Feel included. And that was something that we didn't have in Berlin. 
um, we definitely feel part of Portugal. Yeah. And that is a feeling I didn't know I was missing until we are we were established here. It is the first time in my life that I know that in 20 years I'm in Portugal. It's the first time. It's the first time that I feel home. It's the first time that wherever I go on holiday, I think Portugal is better. What are things that you appreciate um, about Portugal when you come when you come here? As I've gotten older, that my yearning for Portugal has gotten stronger, mm. you know, and I started spending more time, more time in Portugal. And then when my parents re immigrated back, you know, I started spending even more time there. And and now it's like I, I kind of did the full, you know, I'm I'm, you know, basically back you know, basically back in Portugal. And it's really surprising because I never thought that would happen, you know, but it's something that I think is very primal. It's the yearning of your body to go home, the yearning of your body to connect with a place where in a way, you know, in a primitive way, everything kind of makes sense. You know, you're grounded in that place. There's a great word in in Portuguese, and I'm not sure that there's a specific word in English for it, but it's uh, saudade. Uh, which is this wistful longing. Uh, and uh, oddly, that's the street that we live on. And, and so it's kind of a reminder every day. But this this wistful thinking about what the sense of community may have once been in the United States mm -hmm. or elsewhere is really captured here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's really Im embedded in daily life. You may not see it if you specifically look for it, but after you're here for a while and you do that Zen breath and you kind of relax into it, it washes over you. I think that everyone in life, not, not many people can, but everyone in life should find a place where they just breathe in and say, I belong. And some of us are privileged to find one. Um, and even if you're not born in it, um, just to actually arrive and, and, and just say, <sighs> I belong. I feel home. That is the most important thing. And I I have yet to meet someone, a traveler, let's call our colleagues, who does not feel that if they stay in Portugal long enough, to, that they don't feel that. And I think that if someone can take away something from Portugal. So I think that Portugal is the best place to live for a day, a week or a lifetime. I can't think of a better place to have kids. In, in then in Portugal, I made I consciously made that decision when I decided to leave South Africa that I needed to take. Oof, you're making me emotional. I needed to take my children to a place or a country where they could live peacefully. I didn't want what I had been through for my children to for my children and, and more so my grandchildren. I was being very hopeful that my grandchildren would, would have a much better life. And I cannot imagine yeah. a better life than what my grandchildren have. I'm blessed. I'm truly, truly blessed to have ended up here rather than any other place on the planet. Absolutely blessed, yeah. Well, no better place to end than there. So thank you once again to all of our guests from season two. Thank you to all of you for listening. We are so delighted that you stuck with us for more than 200 episodes. Please remember to subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Also, don't forget that Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine. Download it. It's for free. And we'll be back next week with season three. And as we say in Portugal, Cesar Bem Vindo, welcome to The Simple Life.